I'm Wendell, it's time for another level one diagnostic. What's on the slab, what's on the table, the operating table this time? <laughs> Studio lighting. This is the Hive Light 100C. It's pretty cool, it's USB, it's controlled by an Atmel AVR, which is the same processor that's found in, you know, the Arduino, you know, it's the, the higher end version. And you can upgrade the firmware through USB and actually do, you know, DMX style special effects just on the light. Uh, except mine's got some problems. Now there's actually nothing, well, I, I was gonna say there's nothing wrong with the light, meaning that this is, a, this is like a studio light. It's really cool because it's an LED light. It puts out like three, 400 watts of heat, but it only uses like 75 watts of electricity. It's got a little nifty microcontroller in it. Uh, there's a lot of accessories you can put on it. I've got, you know, a clamp header thing, so we can do a China ball sort of a deal with this, but you can also do barn doors and all sorts of fun stuff. Yeah, the, the YouTube thing is it's, it's interesting, it's fun. It's not all YouTube, but you know, some of it's YouTube. Anyway, there's new software out for this light. Yeah, there's a computer inside the, uh, the light and you can run special effects with it. Now it does have a DMX interface, so if you've got a controller, you can do that kind of thing. But the microcontroller in here offers uh, functionality, at least they wrote the software for it, to where you know it can simulate police lights or a fire or something like that. You know, you can flicker, because it's LED. I mean, there's a lot of flexibility here with this kind of light. And that's, you know, that's, that's part of the reason that these lights are an interesting proposition. So it's got a USB port and it's upgradable, but there's something wrong with mine. Uh, it, it doesn't have a complete software image. The software image on here is uh, barely operational. Um, meaning that it'll operate the light, but it doesn't support over the wire, over USB upgrades. And the reason for that is because the bootloader is missing. So in manufacturing, they didn't actually put the bootloader on it. So even though this company is pretty cool, they've come out with a software update to update my light, I can't update it because the piece of software that would allow the updates is physically missing from the image that's programmed on this light. Well, not to worry, I'm Wendell. That's how we roll. It's based on an Atmel AVR. And I just so happen to have the original Atmel AVR SDK 500 software programming kit. So level one diagnostic, let's take this thing apart and perform surgery. So first, first I tried the SDK 500. The SDK 500 was a little problematic for some reason. It might be that it needs a, a DB9 serial cable, but fortunately Arduino have this thing called Arduino as ISP. So you can actually take one Arduino and make that into an ISP. And so that's that's what we're doing here. Uh, I've got a teeny tiny, like this is a, well this is like a dip version of the original Arduino Uno. And I've got a little, you know, sort of FTDI USB to serial adapter. And so this is convenient for breadboarding, I think a little bit more convenient than the normal Arduino form factor. And so I'm troubleshooting it here, but I'm having trouble getting it to load the bootloader and so let me show you what I've done. I've got this wired up <laughs> into a breadboard and the Arduino as ISP is literally a program that you load onto one Arduino to use it to program another and so that's what I've done here since I was sort of defeated from using my SDK 500 which is probably ultimately just needing a null modem adapter. It's like I need a DB9 null modem adapter. That's in the basement. I don't feel like going to the basement. We're not we don't have to go to the basement. This is not rocket surgery. We just need to do some some in-circuit programming so I can get that upgraded firmware on my light. So the disassembly here, there are a lot of screws. There are far too many screws, but I've got it completely taken apart and I've got, really it's just four wires. The clock line, MISO, MOSI, well, it's in and out, in an input and output lines from the bus and a reset line, but you also need power and ground. Power to supply power to the Arduino because you definitely don't want to plug it into external power when you're doing this and ground so that ground from the point of view of the programmer Arduino is the same as ground from the point of view of the program E Arduino. And so uh, it's not working. Oh, you know what I bet it is? I bet that when the reset signal is sent, cause this is an old school, like this is this, this uh, miniature Arduino is based on the original circuit, which had some some bugs or features, depending how you want to look at it. I bet that um, the programmer is sending a reset line uh, and or a reset command, and it's actually resetting the programmer Arduino instead of the target Arduino. 
because even with nothing connected, I'm getting an error message from AVR Dude, which yes, that's the name of the programmer, AVR Dude, of the programming software that's built into the Arduino sketch thingy. So, so with my breadboard here, I'm using some diff different colored jumper wires and I've got my reset pin wired in. Now, I, I thought it may be that the reset pin on this one, like maybe pin 10 was not working correctly because I saw the LED flashing in a weird way. So I actually edited the AVR dude or the AVR as an ISP program and moved it from pin 10 to pin nine uh, and moved my status heartbeat LED to pin eight just so I could troubleshoot it, but that wasn't related. And so that's the troubleshooting that, that I've, I've done so far, but it still is not working. Um, so I bet the issue is that the programming Arduino really is getting reset instead of the target Arduino. So we're gonna need to use a capacitor to absorb that reset and probably 10 microfarads will do that. Let me see if I can find one. So now I've got my handy daddy electrolytic capacitor kit, which you should never ever buy capacitors in this form factor. It's about a million thousand percent markup. Oh yeah, that one's obviously been in a breadboard before. Let's just... Yeah. All right, so what this is gonna do is absorb the reset pulse. I hope. So I'm gonna connect this to the reset pin. I'm gonna use the little jumper wire here and connect the reset pin uh, to somewhere that I can get to easily and then plus five volts. And then I'm gonna hook this electrolytic capacitor up so that whenever a short pulse is seen on the reset pin, that it does not actually reset the uh, Arduino that we're using for programming. And then we'll try to program the bootloader again. Haha, <laughs> success with the uh, electrolytic capacitor in place, we are able to reprogram the bootloader. Now, bad news, when you reprogram the bootloader, it erases the entire chip. Um, so that's bad. But I'm hoping that now we can just load the firmware on this. It should also be noted that, that Hive Lighting uses a custom bootloader, so you can't use the regular SDK 500 bootloader if you want it to work with their other stuff. So, because I was working with their support, they emailed me the bootloader that they use, and so I have flashed that bootloader onto this, so hopefully that'll be okay. But, all right, so when we plug this back in, even though it's power on and that kind of thing, there was no power LED and that kind of stuff, it's really scary because putting the bootloader on erases the entire chip, and so it's not gonna do anything, it's not gonna respond. But we did hear the beep, you know, from Windows. I have to use a Windows machine for this. Well, I don't have to, it'll work fine, but. Um, it beeped to detect the serial connection, and so we were able to flash it, and so, because it's just a, uploading a hex file, not really a big deal, and as soon as the upload finished, bam, the thing booted right up. Yeah, look at that, I can get to effects, profiles, and sources. Okay, let's shut this thing down, and get it fully, the rest of the way put back together. All right, everything's put back together, and on the stand, let's see what sort of fun stuff we've got. I have made fire. Somebody watching TV, police car, and a whole bunch of other special effects. So, woo! Now we can really RGB all the things. So, I'm happy to report this level one diagnostic was another success. I'm Wendell, I'm signing out, and you can find me in the level one forums. <laughs>